I'm Jeff Kleinman, Editor-in-Chief of BevNet, here live from my living room. As people have enacted social distancing during the COVID-19 crisis, some have rushed to grocery stores, but a lot of brands are also finding traction via e-com services like Amazon. To help sort through the rush and help brands find their footing in these turbulent times online, I've reached out to Betsy McGinn, the founder of McGinn Ecom Consulting. Betsy, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you. Are you are you well? I am well, sheltering in place like most of our colleagues. And uh, it hasn't changed my business that much since I interact with a lot of my clients remotely anyway. But there's a lot going on. Now, are you onboarding a lot of clients right now? That has been um, something that's changed a little bit. Yes, I am onboarding clients right now, but what I'm finding is some new complexities in getting seller accounts live on Amazon. And um, so there's definitely some challenges arising right now in different areas, and I know we're going to cover some of those, but one of them is new clients, not only from the standpoint of opening seller accounts for them, but from their production capabilities and forecasting and those sorts of things that, you know, we've kind of had down to a science previously. All right. Well, let's pull out and start broad really quickly. What's your general overview of the way the coronavirus is affecting uh, the way that food and beverage brands are doing business on Amazon? So one of the things that I'm seeing in general, and you may have experienced this as a consumer, but Amazon isn't guaranteeing two-day delivery anymore. Sure. Delivery is stretched out to about four or five days. And that is obviously a huge demand shift from brick-and-mortar retail to online. Um, so what we're seeing a fair bit is out of stocks, right? Not just in those essential categories where there are reports of hoarding like paper products and those sort of things, but, but food and beverage as well. It isn't, in my opinion, hoarding behavior though, because when you think about how much of our population routinely eats out, you know, 48% of the dollars are spent in restaurants, those have had to shift somewhere. So they're shifting into grocery stores and online. And then as people are also backing away from wanting to even be out publicly at grocery stores, obviously, you know, online is getting this huge surge. Now, speaking as a consumer, a couple of times in the past few weeks, being a prime addict, I've found uh, delays of several days and left something in the cart or walked away. Are you picking up a signal on that? Are people saying, well, I'm going to go and try and fulfill it myself at a store? I, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Because part of it just um, uh, sort of buzzed out. You, you said that you're putting things in the cart and then, yeah, go just go uh, ahead. And I wonder if the increased delays, oh. uh, the sort of the things that hold off for uh, the, I'm sorry. I'm wondering if the two, the absence of the two-day delivery, is causing prime addicts to walk away from some of their orders and try and get things at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. I don't see that as an overall trend. I mean, clearly, if it's something you need today, if you have kids, for example, and you need, you know, diapers and wipes or baby food or those sorts of things, you're going to have. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like um, people are adjusting to the t delivery times of two and three and four or three and four and five days and just going with it because of the uncertain times we're in. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing on site that's it, that actually is unusual is typically when a product is unavailable, it just completely comes off the site. Like there is no listing for it. If you're out of stock, you don't have a presence on Amazon. But what I'm seeing more and more is Amazon is keeping those listings and giving a, um, a, a potential delivery date, like April 13th or April 5th, 
And that leads me to believe that people are still wanting the products and Amazon's trying to give them the best possible um, expected date of delivery. Otherwise, in my opinion, they would just pull those listings off like they have traditionally, but they want consumers to know that they're trying to meet their needs. Okay. And are sellers communicating to Amazon how well they're able to meet demand from consumers? So there isn't really that communication mechanism, but what I am seeing and advising brands to do is just to put in more inventory than usual, right? So one of the things you want to do is keep inventory fairly lean in Amazon warehouses if you're using fulfillment by Amazon, for example, two to three weeks and replenish regularly. But I, I would advise them to keep four to five weeks because we just don't know what the accelerated pace of sales is going to be. The flip side of that, though, is, you know, most brands forecast and they have product already spoken for or they have production time scheduled for new inventory that they aren't um, you know, going to be able to fulfill in in a timely manner. So there still are some constraints, not just on Amazon side, but on the brand side to meet the consumer needs. Are you hearing from the brands you represent that they are shifting more merchandise online though? And that revenue their revenue balance is moving toward direct to consumer? I, I think what they're trying to do is meet everybody's needs because obviously they have these relationships with grocery stores that they need to maintain and, and want to maintain. But with this demand and the shifting consumer buying habits, you know, it really is not just a need, but an opportunity for these brands. Because something I'm seeing is some of the bigger brands have um, pulled advertising activities. Amazon has shut down coupons until April 5th. And to me, this provides um, sort of an entry point for some of our smaller natural and specialty brands to break through on Amazon. Because if they can participate in activities that put them in front of the consumer more than some of the conventional brands have had the opportunity to do, there are great opportunities for these smaller and new brands to start getting some legs on Amazon. We're hearing in brick and mortar that promos are pretty much off, off. For, the, uh, for the time being. Is that happening on Amazon? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And in fact, I, I wouldn't advise brands necessarily to promote if they could, but I would still advise them to advertise on the Amazon platform if they um, can put that in their budgets because it, it is an opportunity right now. Yeah, it's it's sort of like getting your product stacked at the front of the store. Exactly, exactly. Now, a lot of brands use Amazon as a business-to-business -business platform as well mm -hmm. to get supplies, ingredients, packaging. Mm -hmm. um, are they able to handle that? fulfillment? Are you hearing about brands being able to get what they need to operate? So um, from a business to business standpoint, there's a lot, there's a lot of moving pieces in that. And I wanted to give you an example of one of the places that I, I anticipate brands um, having challenges. So um, I have a business partner that a lot of my clients use to warehouse their product do the labeling, sticker, stickering, pick and pack to then send their product into Amazon Fulfillment Centers for FBA. Yesterday, they were notified by the state that they had to close down. And so okay. that, to me, was, you know, eliminating an essential service. So we got this memo, not a great scenario. By afternoon, they had talked to the state and I guess uh, convinced them that they are, in fact, part of these essential services that are needed and they reopened. So I think uncertainty about business partners and not only if they can supply the goods that these brands need, but the services is going to be in flux as we go along. So all these interlinked circles within the supply chain, uh, if one happens to get broken, you can, you can start to see disruptions. Yeah. Um, now, is it is that example you think something 
that we'll see more of, or is it something that we'll see less of as they start to work out the kinks? I tend to think, and it's just my opinion that we'll see more of it, because I feel like we're at the front end of um, what's happening in the U.S. around COVID. Um, there are also sort of universal supply chain issues, not just from China, because obviously China is one that you can highlight as uh, an obvious supply chain issues. But one of my clients, for example, brings all their product in from Italy. And we know that Italy is one of the hardest hit right now. So I think we're going to continue to see um, more iterations of issues and solutions in the supply chain because it's going to really push people to be creative. Now, let's talk about people who are able to produce, particularly for food and beverage. Um, last week, as, we, as you and I spoke, Amazon said it was going to start prioritizing essential items, and among those, of course, uh, food and beverage, medical supplies. Um, and I, I'm wondering, though, given the sort of uh, long-tail diet approach of many small brands that work with Amazon, um, what is the meaning of this prioritization? How should brands look at it? So first of all, um, let's look at what the categories of essentials are. You know, medical supplies, as you said, food and beverage, household is one, uh, health and beauty, but at the exclusion of luxury beauty and pets. So those are all the essential categories. And um, right now, Amazon is not editing anything from those categories. I think they don't want to be the ones that make a judgment call about something being essential or not. Like, are potato chips essential? Well, probably for a lot of people at this moment, they are, right? So, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that down the line, Amazon may have to make some tough calls about what are the items that are really, that really have the velocity and the consumer's need versus those that may not, may be taking warehouse space, but don't have that same sales trending. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's going to happen, but if I were Amazon and had to make some tough choices, that's probably the direction I'd go in. Are there any categories that are really taking off right now? I think all of them, really. I, I, I can't say that there's one. I've looked at everything from um, household items to products like mac and cheese and snacks and beverages. And I see them all experiencing not only growth, but the out-of-stocks we talked about. And to me, that's indicative of a trend. Um, last week, you know, as we were on a call together, we heard from someone that you know, was doing $30,000 a month on Amazon. And suddenly within a week with a beverage product, they were doing a hundred thousand. And I don't think that's unusual. I think people are also shifting from a beloved product to something that they may be willing to try if there's out of stocks. And that's another opportunity for the small, newer brands that we know and love. Now, are those brands also competing with Amazon's increased uh, private label push, though? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon does. You're absolutely right. They do have that increased private label push. But one of the things I have not seen is Amazon prioritizing their products over other brands. You know, as I search in other categories, even searching for their products, they're showing up in search in what appears to be an organic way. In other words, they're not taking priority over, over other items. They're not appearing in um, headline ads. They're not um, in any way, in my opinion, changing their behavior around how they're promoting and selling their products. Now, again, that could change. They may be having supply issues right now, just like everybody else. Um, and we could see a difference in that. But right now, um, I'm seeing business as usual in terms of how they're prioritizing um, products in, in in organic ways in search. Betsy, uh, brands that use fulfillment by Amazon that that send their products to the Amazon warehouse and then have it shipped out by uh, the larger company. Are there any guidelines or best practices that you'd suggest uh, that they follow now 
uh, during the crisis? So I would say um, send in more inventory than usual. You know, one of the uh, principles I try to work with my clients on is is keeping inventory um, at a reasonable level within Amazon fulfillment centers because you are going to pay um, storage fees on that from month to month. Amazon does look at that in terms of your report card, how much inventory you have on hand versus what you sell. But right now we're sort of in unchartered territory. So I recommend that instead of that three week inventory, having five to six weeks. You don't know what the acceleration is going to be. You don't know if you're going to be the default pasta brand for one that has sold out. So I would definitely increase inventories and monitor it closely. Be sure that you're in your seller account frequently to understand what your turn rates have evolved into. And would you suggest if if that starts to pick up, continuing to push product into the factory? Or I'm sorry, continuing to push product into the warehouse? I would, yeah. I, I would do what I can in terms of the balance of supply between brick and mortar and Amazon. I mean, I think that's the fine point a lot of companies are going to struggle with philosophically, wanting to make sure they take care of brick and mortar and also seizing this changing consumer behavior opportunity that we're seeing online. And I don't think it's just Amazon. I've um, sh- I've gone to shop on Vitacost and Thrive and some of the other partners, and I'm seeing the same sorts of um, out of stocks, um, uh, messages about getting product to you as soon as we possibly can. So I think everybody is kind of struggling to keep up. What about brands that are working from their own sites? Let's let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you're doing direct from your own uh, from your own website. Um, are there any best practices that you'd suggest there? And are there any trends that are occurring in that space? Yes. So that's an interesting um, uh, scenario right now. So when I have clients, I recommend that they they do have their own direct to consumer. And of course, Amazon, but decide where they want to focus their attention because the cost of getting consumers to your website and doing Amazon merchandising and marketing activities can be too much for a brand, right? You need to decide where to put your sources. And my belief is that you're going to get a better bang for your buck on Amazon because you have 200 million unique visitors every month. 105 million Prime members, which is 82% of U.S. households, right? So you've got this captive audience that you can market to. And it's my belief. Yeah, exactly. And it's also my belief that um, for our types of products, consumers are not necessarily going to go to your website. They're going to go where they can buy their dog food, their cashmere sweater, and their um, favorite beverage at the same time. So having said that, um, I think there is an opportunity right now for direct-to-consumer websites. I know that I've gone to visit a couple myself when I saw that the product was out of stock at Amazon. But I can also tell you anecdotally from one of my clients who has had a really nice direct-to-consumer business on their site, they had to shut it down because they got 13,000 orders in one weekend. So they couldn't divert it to their own store. They couldn't keep up with that demand, right? They that even with a healthy business that they're used to fulfilling, that was overwhelming. So I think there are you know benefits to focusing on one versus the other during this time. Um, If you have the capabilities for your direct to consumer site, you're seeing that demand and you can keep up. That's one thing, but I think it is going to be challenging for brands to try to keep up if it's just a very small part of their business that suddenly spikes. Okay. Um, One thing that we've seen spike, unfortunately, across the country has been uh, workers uh, filing for unemployment. We know that Amazon has said it wants to hire, you know, 100,000 people in the next couple of weeks. Um, Are any of the positions that they're looking to fulfill or looking to fill relevant to the kinds of workers in food and beverage who are affected by the crisis right now? 
So I think a lot of that work is going to be warehouse work. And um, I, I, I think that they're completely capable of ramping up there quickly. Remember, they do this seasonally every year. So yeah. they've got this down to a science. I do think it creates an opportunity because when I think of the hourly workers that are really struggling during this time, you know, in, they can be food and beverage workers from restaurants or even, you know, people, I see people that are dog walkers or other roles like that, that are losing their income. It does provide an opportunity for, you know, a decent wage. It may not be the ideal job that someone wants at this moment, but a hundred thousand jobs is such a great opportunity right now for our economy and for people that, you know, are experiencing their loss of income right now. Absolutely. Any last advice you've got for brands that are trying to uh, take advantage of the opportunities that are coming in from the increased emphasis on direct to consumer? So um, I think really work with your your e-commerce partners, whether again, whether it's Amazon, Thrive, Vitacost, whoever's out there to um, whoever you're working with to try to seize the opportunity. If there are marketing opportunities for your brand, I would take advantage of them, especially if they're pay-per-click advertising, because that may have worked itself into an affordable range with brands, some of the bigger brands stepping away from it. So anything you can do to, you know, become, um, to sort of break through the consumer at this point as a small brand, I would definitely take advantage of it. And there are opportunities on all these platforms to do that. The one thing I would say is to be really conscious of um, how you respond to your consumer. For example, if you are taking advantage of this opportunity and suddenly you are out of stock, don't send consumers an email. We are all being bombarded with emails about COVID right now. So I would say, do your best to do messaging on Amazon's site or your own site if that's what you're, you know, uh, working with, um, and then get back into business as quickly as you can. But bombarding consumers with additional um, communication is not going to win the day for these brands. Um, this is because you're you're meeting them at point of sale rather than uh, rather than pushing to them. A couple of quick questions to follow up on that. First of all, we know that uh, in retail, buy, the buying uh, cycle has been disrupted. Yeah. Is the online an opportunity to introduce innovation that might not otherwise get to the store right now? Yeah, yeah. And, and for a couple of reasons, not just, as you said, the buying cycle being interrupted, i.e. category reviews being delayed. But so many brands in our world miss that opportunity at Expo West to greet and meet buyers and introduce this innovative product that they always hold on to for that opportunity, either yeah. whether it's fancy food, Expo West, Expo East. And so I've always felt that that online, especially Amazon, where you can um, you know, sort of control your opportunity through the Seller Central platform is a great way to introduce innovation. The other thing I do want to say too for small brands is one of the challenges we experience as small brands, right, is getting paid in order to um, invest in more production and inventory. The One of the obvious advantages that small brands have on Amazon is when they use the Seller Central platform, Amazon pays you every two weeks for the product that's sold, not 60 days, not 90 days. And that enables small brands to have cash flow to meet these opportunities. So it's it's a great cycle for being for a small brand to be able to come to market and take advantage of this you know opportunity that Amazon offers. As we know, cash flow is of the utmost importance right now. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Betsy, thank you so much for spending time with us and for helping the entrepreneurs out there. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Thank you, Jeff. We'll take care. Stay safe. Hey, did you like what you just saw? Well, for more from BevNet or Nosh, hit subscribe or ding that bell.